Hey guys, Captain Matt, Marathon Sport Fishing. It's tile fishing season, guys. Today I'm going to show you a little run. We do a run offshore. I'm going to show you a little bit of how to catch and look for blue line tiles down here in the Florida Keys. These are two big donkeys for the species. They are big fish. We got a limit of six today. Hey guys, on this episode of Marathon Sport Fishing, we are tile fishing. We've got a great episode here. Grab your life jackets and hang on. Welcome aboard. Guys, we're just getting ready. We are on our deep drop spot, getting ready to do our first drop. So you can see the rig here. I've got about a 10 foot rig. I make them out of 200 pound test. Not that you need it, but it doesn't tangle up that way. So I've got three squid, one each weight, and we're going to drop down. You want to be really careful when you're putting that weight in. If you watch when I drop this, those hooks fly around, so I'll kind of dart around. You don't want a hook in your arm with an eight pound weight hanging on the other side of it. So down we go. That's the rig. We'll see what we'll see what happens out here today. All right, guys, we just hit the bottom and around 780. What I do, I like to hit the bottom and I'll lay the rig down a minute or so just in case there's something on it. I just give it a minute, let the spool roll out. So she's been on the bottom you know, a minute or two. I'm just going to give it a, give a little bit here and I'll snug it up. Sometimes they'll pile on it right away when you hit the bottom. That's just kind of a good practice to hit. I'm just watching my rod tip. The weight's snugging up now. I'm gonna, you want to pick it up off the bottom. You do not want it dragging. You can see the rod tip pick up there. As the tip's bouncing, now this line's gonna settle in for a minute. So as the tip's kind of bouncing up and down, it's not on bottom here. Right there, you can see it hit bottom. We're on bottom there, so. A couple different ways to do this. You can cruise along, bounce along bottom like I'm doing here, or you can lay it down, leave it for about a couple, three minutes, and then pick it up and leapfrog it over a couple hundred feet. Either way, it seems to work. It just depends on what you're comfortable with. If you're if you're newer at it, you might want to try the leapfrog method. It's as long as you're not dragging it, it's a big deal. Like right now, I'm just that weight's bouncing on the bottom gradually here. We got a nice fish on right now. We're hooked up. We're hooked up. So you don't want to horse them too much. I got my drags kind of set pretty light. Always mark your spot on your locator when you hook one up. So we got a fish on. All right, guys, 150 feet. When I set, when I set my reel, I pull 10 feet off and zero it because you don't want to overshoot it and ran into the, run into that rod tip. We're on the wind on leader. Let's see if I got any, I don't have any color. The sun's at a weird angle. Oh, got color, got color. Got fish coming up, fish coming up. Big tile fish, guys. Be really careful. Oh, he's a big one, too. Nice. Try to get the gaff in his skills here. There we go, buddy. Camera, come hold this, please. Just grab that for you. Okay. Swing a little bit so I can get the weight. Mm. Grab the weight and just pick it up. Set it right in the holder. There we go. Camera's helping out. That's a huge tile fish, you guys. That thing is huge. Nice. That's what we're looking for. Great big blue line tile. All right, guys, we're back on position, getting ready to do the drop. I'm going to back my drag out so she'll just spin a little bit and won't overspool. You see, I've got my rigs laid out here. I got the three squid on it. 
gently drop the weight down. Grab a hold of your spool, let her go. Like I said, you want to make sure you clear the boat so that one of them hooks does not flip around and accidentally hit you in the arm because that would be a bad situation. So that was a great big tile we just caught. We're going for number two. The skunk is off the boat. Hey guys, we're hooked up again. We just got bit. All right, guys, we're down to up to 100 revolutions. Coming up here, we'll see if we still got a fish on. Sometimes they pop off on you once in a while. Okay, we're on the wind on. That's 50 feet long. See if we got anybody. Oh, I got color camera. What do we got? Ooh, another nice tile fish. Another nice tile fish. There is my little calf here. Nice blue line coming in. Oh, he's on the top hook too. So what was happening there, guys, and the middle hook got stripped. I, I seen I got nibbled on, seen I got nibbled on, and I laid the bait down on the bottom. And he came back and bit it again. I bleed these guys out first. The first one's still bleeding out. We just got him a little bit ago. Didn't like that. Get him going bleed them out the the quality of the fish is just a lot better once you, you can see he's going i cut through his gills here's the first one we got this one's an absolute stud after we bleed them out they go in the ice box and tamra's ran salt water in here on the bottom so he's going down in a brine right now that water temperature is about 28 degrees in that salt water in there so that'll cool your fish down, get them down to good temp. These guys, I'm actually gonna keep them. They'll stay in there for a complete day. Okay, watch the tip. If it does anything weird, tell me, okay? Other than yeah. just bouncing like that. If it's going like this, you got a fish grabbing it. I think I almost gotta lay it down with that big a squid. The first guy was huge, so he got it all the way in, but that was from smaller ones. You might have to lay it down. If you see one biting, what you'll have to do is just right there it's got one there's one playing with it there just see the rod tip go like that so i'm laying it down to give them a chance to eat it okay okay guys once you lay that rig down it's going to get a big bow in the line because you don't want the line tight you want it kind of loose so it takes a second for that bow to tighten up and then you're going to get hammered by the fish if there's one on there but it does take a couple seconds. Okay, guys, very, very important here. When you first hook up that fish, you got to think he's never been off the bottom. They're going to fight like crazy initially. You just seen where I just back the drag down there. I go real light drag on them until I get them up off the bottom a little bit. I got about 12 pounds of drag on right there. You don't, you don't want to lose them. You can see the drag will pull just a little. You want to keep pressure on, but you don't want to lose the fish with these big boat waves going up and down. All right, guys, he's coming up. We're at what, 300? 350. 350 revs. Oh, got color coming up on here, guys. Here he comes. What do we got? Big blue line, holy crap! Look at the size of that oh guy! That guy's huge! Son of a gun! Back the drag down just a little. Look at, we got cleaned off of the other two right there. That guy is a huge blue line tile fish, you guys. Huge! I don't know if he's still on. Give him a minute. Don't look like he's on there, Tamara. Nope. Got off. First one that got off today. All right, guys, we just missed that fish. I just laid it down on the bottom. It's been down about a minute. 
Got another one biting right there. All right, we got him. Got that one's hooked up. There we go, there we go. So when you get a bite and you lose them, drop that thing back down there and lay it down. I mean, that's a big deal. So we're hooked up here again, 800 feet of line out or 800 revolutions, a little more, about 1,000 feet. And we are on with tilefish number five, the way it looks. We got color. What do we got? We got a double. No kidding. Damn, two tilefish, baby. We are limited. We, are, we were going to do one more drop. We got to get them in the boat first. All right. Grab them, Tamara. Grab them. Grab them. Here's Tamara. That's awesome. Stand up low, honey. Tilefish limit. So we doubled down here, got the double. These are average size ones here. We got a couple of huge ones, some average. That is our limit today of tilefish. Awesome. Hey guys, Captain Matt here. Just got the filet table cleaned up and ready. We're doing a little tilefish action today. So Tamara and I had a great day out the other day catching some tiles. I'm gonna show you how to clean them. They are a little different than some of the other fish we catch. First of all, these guys have a really tough skin layer on. They are just solid. So you definitely want to come in from behind and come up underneath the scales like this. You notice the angle of the knife. I'm, I'm angling up underneath them scales instead of cutting through them because they have some tough skin on these cats. So we're going to knock off a side here. Get up around the head. Be careful, the gill plates here. That guy is really sharp. You don't want to grab it right there. You just want to be careful with it. I'm going to angle the knife at an angle coming down in here just to get underneath the skin. Again, they are very, very tough fish. So then just work your way down the back the bone on the top. I like to typically outline all the fish I do on the bottom as well. Okay, we'll slice up this direction. Come up here right before the end of the fan there and then work my way up to the side of the ribs basically here. It's really tough skin on these guys. They do have pin bone type bones that run all the way down the sides with them too. Just rolling my knife over the ribs, just getting a good feel for it. This is an absolutely amazing eating fish. You want to just take your time with them. If you're going out there 15 to 20 miles to catch them, do a good job filleting them. And you can hear how tough that skin is. So I'm going to show you how I do these. It's a little different. I'm going to pop this guy back in the cooler. Get the table a little clean off here. So again, this particular fish, there's bones that come all the way down. You got a bloodline here, but you can feel the bones all the way down in them. So what I like to do is I'm going to run down each side of those bones. Because you're going to take them right out of there. A couple different ways. I don't, I don't personally like to run the knife down the back above them. I like to take them out first. Just gives you a cleaner flay on the bottom. Just running the knife down, hitting the skin, flaying it across. So you trim the back of the bloodline off with the pin bolts. So then what you're ending up with, you got this solid strip down the middle with nothing in it. I always start with my sharp knife. I'm gonna cut a little slit in the tail so I got a spot to stick my finger through and hold on once I get going. Then I use the dull knife to fillet the back on these guys. Ideally, I want to leave about a sixteenth inch of skin on there. So I'm holding this knife really flat as I come across. So you can see on the back, I didn't, ha didn't have it lifted up quite enough. You got a little bit of bloodline on the outside of the fish, but in the middle, I was fine. I'm just going to fine tune it. 
take that extra little bit of bloodline off the back that I missed. You can eat it if you want to. Personally, I don't like it. Just when people eat fish and they say it's fishy. It's one of two things. It's either old or they didn't get the bloodline off. But here, that's, that's an excellent piece of fish. Hey guys, Captain Matt. All right, we're going to grill up a little of the tile fish I got today. So I'm going to do typical, anytime I'm grilling fish, I give it a little coating of olive oil here. Then I'm going to give a little dusting of the Everglades heat. I'm talking a light dusting. So we're going to give a little top shot, basically. Then I'm going to roll these over and give them you know, a little bit of a bottom, just light dusting on it. So that'll hit the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then I'll take and throw them on the grill. Currently, I've got the grill or the smoker. I've got baked potatoes on top. Again, a light olive oil coating, kosher salt, and pepper. Takes those guys a good hour at 350 to get done. Okay, guys, here we go. So I've got the tile fish on. The grills are all domed or the smokers are domed in the middle. You can see the fat coming out, which is probably like an omega-3 coming out of the fish. And again, the rule of thumb. See here where it's okay, it's a loose, it's time to flip it. If it sticks, if it's sticking, you don't flip it over. Hey guys, all right, we've got the tile fish off the grill. So you can see it's nice and juicy on the top, which was the bottom. I flipped them over after I, after I pulled them off. The middle piece, I flaked out a little bit, tear off a chunk. It just kind of falls apart. I'll give you a little shout. Man, does that smell good. Excellent. If you haven't had tile fish, a couple of our friends came over tonight. Big shout out to John and Shirley. I know they're having a little tile fish on the grill. We gave them a little bit. The texture is the texture is very much like lobster. It's got a very lobstery flavor. A little that little bit of Everglades heat I put on the top just kind of ices the cake. Absolutely excellent. So we have a baked potato. Miss Tamara made a Greek salad with a homemade Greek salad dressing. If you guys would like the recipe, just shoot me a comment and I'll send that over. Today's mandatory cocktail, we're, we're getting into summertime down here. So we are doing a gin and tonic, but a Hendrix gin. Slice of cucumber, a little spritz of pepper in there. That's today. Well, actually, cheers. That's today's mandatory cocktail. So, Captain Matt signing off here with Marathon Sport Fishing. Hey guys, here we go. I'm going to cover my tile fish tactics. The first thing when I start going tile fishing or start looking to find the tile fish, I look for a muddy, flat bottom. I'm, again, I'm in Marathon here, but this works all up and down the keys. A muddy, flat bottom from 500 to 800 feet of water. These guys dig little burrows in the mud, so you got to be in mud. For real options, if you're going to go tile fishing, I'm using an LP electric here, but you can use an electric or a hand reel. I'll do another video on hand cranking these little monsters, but it's a different setup. For today, I'm using the LP electric. My rod is a Blackfin Daybreak Special number 153. It's an absolutely fantastic rod. It doubles as a sword rod as well for weights up to eight pounds. The line I use is 65 pound braid, period. That's what I use on this particular setup. I do run a top shot, 50 feet of 100 pound monofilament tied together with an FG knot. The reason you're going to do that, guys, when you have a 30 pound to 40 pound snowy grouper slam into that rig, and start going crazy on you, something's going to give when you have straight braid because you've got no flex. That's the reason for the mono. The weight, typically I run to four to seven pounds of weight. Depends on how I'm fishing. If I'm leapfrogging it across the bottom, I'll use less. If I'm keeping it upright, I'll use more. 
My rig is 200 pound, three hook rig, it's eight feet long. Today, as far as the lights go, if you notice, I had no lights on today. Certain days I like lights. I actually think the big groupers see the lights and come after them. But some days you do not need a light to get a bite when you're deep dropping. You just see two limits of tile fish, Tamara and I, not catching them with lights. Again, Captain Matt here, Marathon Sport Fishing. Thank you for tagging along on today's episode. If you haven't had a chance yet, please smash that subscribe button. Also, if you liked the video and I helped you out with a little comment from my content here, helped you maybe catch some tile fish, give me a big thumbs up on it as well. Captain Matt, signing off for today.